hello, welcome back to Flute Salad, welcome to another video. Today, I'm going to be discussing the differences in the lighting between the Hedgehog Engine 1 and the Hedgehog Engine 2 in select Sonic games. Specifically, 2008 Sonic Unleashed, 2011 Sonic Generations, which were both Hedgehog Engine 1 games, and the two current Hedgehog Engine 2 games, Sonic Forces, which came out in 2017, and Sonic Frontiers, which came out in 2021. Now, something I want to clear up is I'm not going to be saying this is better than this and this is better than this much. I'm going to touch on that a little bit, maybe say my preferences here and there, but I'm mainly going to be analysing the positives and differences of the lighting and the shadows, specifically on Sonic in each of the games, and comparing the differences. That is the aim, to compare, not to review. However, there may be a few mentions here and there about if I think one thing does look visually better than the other thing or achieves its aim better than the other thing. So, I'm going to go through a number of different lighting conditions from some of the different stages. To start with, a grassy environment. More often than not, Green Hill. Unleashed starts off strong with Windmill Isle Act 1. The light here is actually at an angle, and Sonic's quills cast shadows onto the other quills and onto the floor. The shadow is at a good resolution here. The reflections on his shoes are lacking. There's not really any reflection, but they do feature a bright spot, which obviously acts as a reflection for the sun, which is in an accurate location. Uh, the ambient lighting looks nice. However, there is no bounce lighting from the ground, illuminating Sonic in a green light from the grass. Isn't that a too advanced thing to do for the Hedgehog Engine 1 and Sonic Unleashed, which came out in 2008? No, because in Sonic Generations, Sonic is lit up with a soft green glow, which you can see here, most clearly on the whites of his shoes, gloves, and the underneaths of his quills. And when you spin him round, you can see it across his whole body. However, there is a trade-off. Sonic is now lit directly from above, meaning there's no real aspect of his quills casting shadows onto each other as there was in Unleashed. Not to mention the resolution of the shadow that Sonic is casting onto the floor is greatly reduced, and as it's directly above, lies flat against the floor, kind of not allowing him to stand out from him. Moving over to the Hedgehog Engine 2, Sonic Forces' Green Hill is a mixture of both the positives and negatives from both Sonic Unleashed and Sonic Generations. Returning from Generations is the green bounce light from the grass onto Sonic, most visible on his gloves. The new engine allows for much better reflections seen here in his shoes when compared to Unleashed. The lighting on Sonic and the shadow he's casting on the floor is now at an angle again, similarly to Unleashed, and is at a nice good resolution, helping Sonic stand out from the floor and look like a physical entity that's standing there, and not just some character. Lighting on the quills, specifically here, is a bit strange. The middle quill appears to be lit, however it should be cast in shadows based on the angle of the light here. However, the lower quills are in complete shadow from the quills above, so I'm not quite sure why that difference is present. Sonic Frontiers' is Green Hill is next, and the camera is pulled out really far in cyberspace, so you're going to have to excuse the resolution here. Many similarities and differences to Forces in particular, most likely due to the fact it's the next game and also uses the same engine. The car shadow returns, but is an extremely low resolution, which can look blotchy and not very good. There is little to no reflection present on his shoes. The lighting and shadows do look really good on all of his body, except for the middle quill, which again appears to be lit for some reason. Spinning Sonic around to the front in all of these games now, well, there isn't much more to see than there is at the back. The lighting slowly diffuses from light to dark over the head and body in Unleashed, and it continues to cast shadows on the side away from the sun. On top of this there's what appears to be an edge light over the top of his quills. Now moving over to Generations again, his entire body is lit by the green bounce light, and while I think it's a nice stylized effect, the trade-off here of the flatter lighting from the direct above light source casts shadow on his entire body, so I'm not too sure how I feel about that trade-off personally. In Hedgehog Engine 2 now, Sonic Forces features a really nice balance with more accurate shadows similar to Unleashed, however with the green bounce light clearly visible on his skin and eyes here, as what appears to be a reflection is also present in his eyes for the first time in any of these games. Frontiers appears to keep with the green bounce light, which is only seen from this angle and not from the back for some reason. Uh, 
Batman, apart from the blockier shadows, looks very similar to that of Forces. However, an issue Frontiers faces is the subsurface lighting. This is the first time a Sonic model has had subsurface lighting. This is where the light diffuses into the skin, like if you hold a torch to your finger, you can see straight through it. Only in Frontiers. It doesn't work great in some angles. Sonic's entire stomach just lights up with a subsurface glow for some reason, which makes him look weird and hollow and not like he's standing there, like a physical being. Now moving away from the green hill or grassy areas into a cityscape. Specifically, we're going to be comparing the lighting here from Unleashed and Frontiers, which again will be in cyberspace. The lighting here in Unleashed is very similar to before. However, there is a few changes. It does actually appear that the bounce lighting is present here as the whites of its gloves are clearly lit with a kind of gray light um, from the bounce light from the road, which was not present in Windmill Isle for some reason. I'm not quite sure why that is. Other than that, it's very similar to before. Frontiers is once again plagued with the same issues, the middle quill being strangely illuminated, the shadow being cast in an atrocious resolution, creating these horrific artifacts around it, the subsurface strangely illuminating his stomach. However, a slight sign of bounce light is seen on the bottom of his glove, uh, which is in shadow, while he's facing us. The next comparison I want to make is specifically the lighting differences in Unleashed and Generations, which are both Hedgehog Engine 1 games. Now we need the same stages and, you know, for comparison for this, so we have Rooftop Run. Now Unleashed looks beautiful here. While not a review, it absolutely trumps Generations here. The quills here are casting shadows onto the other ones and are at a decent and sharp resolution. Uh, they are all lit correctly. The reflections on the shoes with the sun in the bright spot is in the correct location once again, based on the shadows present on Sonic. There is a warm orange bounce light from the buildings and the brick floor, which is best seen here on the quills of Sonic. The only real negative here, and I use negative lightly, is the fact that his ears don't seem to cast shadows onto his head. Meanwhile, Generations features the same flat top-down lighting present from before, leading to a lack of interesting shadows on Sonic, making him look a bit flat. The middle quill is lit like Frontiers for some reason, with no real reflection in the sun and the shoes as well. And the low-resolution shadow directly below. However, as before, the bounce lighting is still present and an orange glow is seen on the quills, which does look nice. The next comparison we're going to be comparing between Hedgehog Engine 1 and 2 again, and this time with a desert area. Again, similarly to before in Unleashed, the exact same points are present. The bounce lighting appears to be here, a suitable colour to match the sand. However, the middle quill seems... I don't know what it is about it. I don't know whether it's too light or too dark, but something about it just seems off. Also here, the reflection of the sun is coming from the complete wrong direction. While Sonic is facing away from us, it would appear that the sun is behind him based on these reflections. However, all the lighting and shadows indicate that it is kind of in front of him. Moving over to the open zone now with Ares Island and Hedgehog Engine 2 Sonic Frontiers. First, I want to say the subsurface lighting is still an issue here, seen in the arms and the ears at a weirdly low resolution, leading to not a great look. The shadows here do look a lot better and a much better resolution than the ones which are in cyberspace. The middle quill is lit here, whereas I feel Sonic's upper right quill should be casting a much bigger shadow onto it. It doesn't look that bad here, and I'm not quite sure why I feel that way. The shoe reflection here is actually muddied and not super clear, but that is a feature here in Sonic Frontiers. In desert areas like Ares, the reflection gets muddier as sand gets on his shoes, whereas on Kronos Island, which are grassy fields, they are much more clear. I'm not sure why there's such a large lighting difference between the open zone and cyberspace, but it is what it is. Finally, I want to talk about a sunset lit area, similarly to Ares Island was. Now, Sunset Heights and Sonic Forces, which shares the Hedgehog Engine 2 with Frontiers. For me, this is the best lighting Sonic has ever had. The harsh but bright lighting on the edge, creating the bright lights facing the sun. The middle quill on the left quills finally being lit correctly. The middle quill getting slightly lit just between the other two quills with really nice and accurate high resolution shadows cast dividing this light off. The warm orange bounce lighting is present from the floor in the buildings which light him up slightly. And the shadow he is casting on the floor is actually a really good resolution, unlike Frontiers, for example. There's no messed up subsurface lighting here, the accurate direction of the shoe reflection, even his hand is casting a shadow onto his leg, as well as his ears actually casting a shadow onto his head. Now, I'm not sure why there's such a stark difference in quality between Forces Green Hill and Forces Sunset Heights when it's running in the exact same lighting engine, and it's not a separate thing like Cyberspace is in Frontiers, 
I don't know, it just looks really good to me. Overall, what's the best? Well, that's for you to decide, but does it matter? No, not really, and was this a huge waste of time? Yeah. See ya!